Well, welcome everybody, and uh, bonjour et bienvenue à tous et tous. Merci d'avoir nous joint ici à Calgary, um, au bureau de Entropy. Uh, we're very proud to announce uh, the investment by the Canada Growth Fund in Entropy today. And to speak about that, I would like to invite the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Krista Freeland. Okay, well, thank you very much, Eric. Thanks, everyone, for being here. This is a tremendously exciting day uh, for Calgary, for Alberta, for Canada, I would say, for the world. Um, this is really historic. Uh, so I'd like to first acknowledge that we're gathered on the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta and the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. I am so glad to be here today with Mike, with the amazing team at Entropy, um, with Rebecca Schultz, um, Alberta's Minister of Environment and Protected Areas. And we have a history together because we work together on the early learning and child care deal for Alberta. Um, and kids in Alberta, or families, are benefiting from fee reductions of as much as $10,000 per child, thanks to that agreement. So thank you very much for your work on that. Also, we're the same size, so it makes it easier to set up the podium. Um, and I am really, really glad to be here in Calgary today to celebrate another historic moment for our country and for workers in Alberta. Lors de ma dernière visite à Calgary, en octobre, j'ai annoncé le tout premier investissement du Fonds de croissance du Canada dans une excellente entreprise appelée Ever Technologies. Le Fonds de croissance du Canada est une pilier du plan économique de notre gouvernement. Le Fonds de croissance est dirigé par certains des meilleurs investisseurs canadiens d'investissement PSP et il va investir dans des entreprises canadiennes, soutenir leur développement et aider le Canada à attirer notre part des milliers de milliards de dollars de capitaux privés qui attendent d'être investis dans l'économie mondiale de demain. Mais de manière plus importante, cela va aider à créer de bons emplois pour les Canadiens et les Canadiens. The first announcement we made together in October was an important moment for Calgary, for Alberta, and for our whole country. Today is another historic milestone. I'm incredibly proud to announce that the Canada Growth Fund is investing $200 million in Entropy, a world-leading carbon capture and sequestration company headquartered here in Calgary. This investment is about great jobs, great careers for people here in Alberta. It will help to support 1,200 jobs including 240 full-time permanent jobs based here in Alberta. This investment is going to help Entropy scale up their signature carbon capture technology and reduce emissions at Advantage Energy's gas plant in the Peace Country. This is an extra personal bonus for me. Um, best part of Alberta. Um, and will reduce emissions there by 2.8 million tons over 15 years. And the investment is going to help Entropy commercialize their world-leading technology for use at projects here in Canada and around the world. Now, why am I describing this as a historic announcement? That's because in addition to the $200 million announcement in Entropy, the Canada Growth Fund is providing to Entropy the very first in the world carbon credit offtake agreement of this kind. As a type of carbon contract for difference, carbon credit offtake agreements backstop the price of carbon, which helps a business like Entropy make the long-term investment decision it needs to grow and create good jobs. Essentially, carbon contracts for difference and carbon credit offtake agreements reduce risk for businesses investing in clean technologies by guaranteeing the price of carbon or carbon credits for a fixed period of time, 
regardless of the actual market price. This tool provides certainty for people like Mike and his team, and it allows them to unlock the final investment decisions for great projects like this one. Through this unique agreement with Entropy, the Canada Growth Fund will backstop the price of carbon credits for the next 15 years at a precedent-setting price of $86 per tonne. This kind of innovative policy and innovative world-leading investing is exactly why we created the Canada Growth Fund. This is something that no other country in the world is doing. It is making Canada a clean technology leader. It's encouraging companies like Entropy to be able to stay here in Canada, to invest in big projects here in Canada. And most importantly, it is creating hundreds of great careers for some of the great people that you see here in this room today. And this is just the start. This is the third time I have been back home in Alberta in eight weeks. And each time it has been to announce a major investment in Alberta. On October 25th, I was here in Calgary announcing the Canada Growth Fund's inaugural investment in Ever Technologies. Ever said that that investment is what made it possible for Ever to stay in Canada and grow its business here. And that is exactly what the Canada Growth Fund is about. On November 29th, I was with the Premier in Fort Saskatchewan, announcing that Dow would be making a historic multi-billion dollar investment in Canada thanks to our investment tax credits. Crucially, those investment tax credits come with labour conditions that ensure that the Dow project and others like it will create good paying jobs and apprenticeship opportunities. And today, here we are announcing another truly historic landmark investment here at Entropy with the world's first carbon credit offtake agreement. And as a bonus, the project will also benefit from our CCUS investment tax credits. These historic investments are concrete proof in how much we can accomplish when we work together. Je suis vraiment heureuse pour Mike et pour toute l'équipe d'Entropy, et je suis vraiment très enthousiaste à l'idée de ce que l'avenir réserve à cette incroyable entreprise et aux personnes remarquablement talentueuses qui ont contribué à faire d'Entropy un véritable exemple de réussite au Canada. Je suis très fière que, grâce au fonds de croissance, notre gouvernement aide Entropy à croître et à devenir une chef de file mondial dans l'élaboration d'une technologie qui jouera un rôle important dans la lutte contre les changements climatiques. Because that's what our government's economic plan is all about. Building Canada's future economy. Creating great careers for people in Alberta right now and supporting innovative, creative, world-leading companies like Entropy, which are leading the way. So really, thank you so much, everyone, who made this possible. As Canadians, we should be really, really proud of what the team here has accomplished. And I am really, really glad that we've been able to put in place, as a country, as a government, some programs in place that are allowing Entropy to grow even more. Thank you so, so much, and congratulations. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It is wonderful to be here to celebrate this incredibly important global first investment into carbon capture with these innovative Calgary-based companies like Entropy. The Entropy and Advantage Energy Glacier Gas Plant Carbon Capture Project has so much potential, and the Alberta government supported it by investing in it in 2021. Through our Technology Innovation and Emissions Reduction, or our TIER Fund, uh, Emissions Reduction Alberta has provided $3.3 million in, term, in a grant for a feed study uh, here in Alberta. 
and we've also uh, supported Entropy and their amazing work of a phase one investment of $20 million in seed funding from Alberta Innovates provided for the project for carbon capture uh, with waste heat recovery and the installation of carbon capture infrastructure at the site. We believed in the importance of this project and here we are today as the Canada Growth Fund, Entropy, Brookfield and Advantage Energy all come together to take the project to the next stages. The fact that we are here in Calgary in the heart of our energy industry with the world's most responsible producers makes me even prouder to be here today. For more than a decade, Alberta has supported the adoption of CCUS by establishing the regulatory framework and infrastructure for industry to adopt this technology to reduce emissions. Most recently, we did announce a new program to support CCS uptake, the Alberta Carbon Capture Incentive Program, that will help support and accelerate the development of CCS by providing incentives for facilities to incorporate emissions reductions into their operations through a grant of 12% for new eligible capital costs. Today's announcement here further demonstrates Alberta's proven track record of global leadership on both CCUS and industrial carbon pricing and emissions trading. We know that it is entirely possible to reduce emissions while still producing the affordable, reliable energy that the world needs. And our government believes that clean technology is the key to reducing emissions in the years ahead. Our industry here in Alberta has the expertise, the skills, the ingenuity, and of course the geology and regulatory framework to deploy CCS, safely collecting, transporting, and permanently storing captured emissions from all industrial sectors. We are proud to have helped recognize the potential of this technology, including the technology at the Glacier Gas Plant site in northeastern Alberta, which I sure hope to visit uh, very soon. And now, of course, just two years later, here we are as they are receiving this critical support and now seeing this finance opportunity that includes a carbon credit offtake agreement, which of course couldn't be done without the stability and longevity of Alberta's tier market, which is the longest standing industrial carbon pricing and emissions trading system in North America. This is a made in Alberta success story, one that demonstrates confidence in what the Alberta government has known for years, that CCUS is a critical solution to reduce emissions and that stable carbon markets drive emissions reductions in a cost effective way. These Calgary based companies and the Glacier plant outside of Grand Prairie are just a testament to our province's innovative and entrepreneurial spirit. I talk a lot about that because it is what brought me to this amazing province and it is what continues to position us as a leader. It's not government, it is the amazing people uh, like Mike who you will hear from next and all of these uh, amazing people who are standing behind me as we look to continue to be a leader in sharing their energy, their expertise uh, to help reduce emissions not only here in Alberta and in Canada but quite frankly around the world. Our government will continue to encourage companies here by working with them, not against them. We know that regulatory stability and predictability are absolutely critical for getting final investment decisions and new ideas off the ground and expanding the great work that is already being done. We have a highly skilled workforce, unrivaled energy and drilling experience, and a pro-business climate. That is why Alberta is truly proving to be the innovation hub of clean energy in Canada. Again, we're excited to see the Canada Growth Fund investing in Alberta companies and our government will continue to do our part to support other companies with their innovative ideas while working towards our realistic achievable pathway to carbon neutrality by 2050. We've invested more than $1.8 billion, including funding from the Tier Fund to support CCUS related projects and programs thus far. We know it works, the market, the people and the opp opportunities are here. So thank you to the Canada Growth Fund for investing in Entropy, along with Advantage Energy and Brookfield. I sure look forward to seeing what's next. We will keep working with you to make sure that our province, our country, is a sustainable energy superpower for decades to come. And I would now like to invite Mike Belenke, CEO of Entropy, to speak about this project and this investment today. Thank you all for attending today. Uh, nice to see you all here in person. Uh, and a, a special thanks to both ministers and the Deputy, uh, Deputy Prime Minister, I suppose I should start with, and Minister Schultz. Thank you, uh, and thank you to the team as well behind me, uh, as well as many of the people that are in the, uh, in the building today. So uh, this has been a huge, um, a huge lift. Uh, a great deal of effort went to make this possible. 
and that came from all the different parties in the deal. So I'll start by just uh, saying that carbon capture is a huge global challenge, and it's an important on a global level. Uh, the way that we think about carbon capture is often conflated into a simple CCS does this and it costs this amount. And what we've all seen uh, recently is um, it's been, become politicized in some cases because of the possibility of, of problems or costs or failures. Uh, and, and I think that the way that Entropy likes to look at carbon capture is simply that we start with a very large problem and you break it down into smaller problems. So the way we see things in decarbonization, every ton of carbon dioxide is uh, is a ton that we should target for the lowest possible cost. So what HP has done is built technology that's focused on capturing the highest number of tons for the lowest number of dollars. And in doing so, our technology has evolved very quickly uh, and, and it's been uh, showcased by the first operating post-combustion CCS project in the world at the Glacier Gas Plant in Northwest Alberta. Uh, so, uh, you know, as we think about this investment from CGF, it's important to acknowledge the whole framework of things that are required to make investments in CCS possible. For starters, you require an actual technology that is capable of being functional over a multi-decade time frame. And that technology is well understood by people in the gas processing space, which is where we started. Uh, it also requires a great deal of capital, which is why we partnered early with Brookfield and now with, C with CGF for capital, uh, to make sure that there's an adequate amount of money to put towards capturing as many tons as possible. And then there's a, a business model which requires going around to different emit, uh, emitting sources and looking for the best way to do that. Because really, in the end, the cost of decarbonization in all cases is going to eventually be borne at the end by taxpayers or by consumers. So our philosophy within Entropy is to make sure that every ton that we capture is the lowest possible cost. And that, that has been demonstrated with the first project that's operating a glacier. And the next phase, which is now uh, essentially at, um, at FID, uh, we expect to be even cheaper than the first phase. Uh, and with that, we have the ability to, to transfer the technology that was developed here in Canada, at first in, in uh, the University of Regina in Saskatchewan, uh, put together with the teams we have here in Calgary, and now uh, investing with, uh, with funding from across Canada. Uh, our, our ability to take that, that technology and, and propagate that, not just within Canada, but across the world is significant. So with the CCO showing a guaranteed revenue stream that actually enables us to have a certainty of recovering our investment, this is a powerful tool. And I think it's probably uh, the type of tool that might become emulated in different jurisdictions. Uh, and, and we hope to see that uh, as the industry scales up. So with that, I'd say thank you again for taking the time to listen. And thank you again to um, um, the ministers for attending. Uh, thank you to the team for helping put this together. And I'll put, uh, I'll, I'll put this back to uh, the media if you have any questions, and I'll take a seat. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We would like to open up the mics uh, to media if there are any questions, and uh, we'll do our best to answer those questions as they, as they come. All right, so it'll be one question, one follow-up. There's a mic just over there for media interested in asking a question. Ce sera une question et une question en suivi. Il y a un micro juste là pour les journalistes intéressés. Merci, thank you. Good. Um, for the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Matt's case, Calgary Herald, Calgary Sun. Mike didn't really need to <laughs> <laughs> um, So thanks for taking questions today. Uh, moving on from this, is there a process in place for a more standardized carbon contracts for different programs, sort of walk through timelines if making this more standard for the whole industry? Yeah, it's a really good question. And, you know, this is, you know, I am here today, and I think Rebecca is here, um, and I am so excited because this is historic. This is our first one in Canada. We think it's the first agreement of its kind in the world. And at 86.50, it sets an important level. Um, we said when we established the Canada Growth Fund that the Canada Growth Fund would be responsible for negotiating contracts for difference. It's really, really complicated. I think the team here, if they look sleepy, it's because they were up until 3 o'clock in the morning finalizing the terms of the deal. Um, and we've said that the Canada Growth Fund will set aside $7 billion of its $15 billion 
dollar allocation for contracts for difference. Now, you know, I remember when we first put forward our proposal for the Canada Growth Fund, um, journalists quite rightly were skeptical. You know, you guys said, is this actually going to work? Is this going to be possible? Is it going to be possible to do it as quickly as Canada needs, given, you know, how intense the race is for capital? And, you know, the reason that I am so excited to be here today is we're showing that it is actually possible, that we have the brilliant engineers, the brilliant innovators here in Canada who have projects that can work, and all they need is a little bit of support from government to give them the certainty to expand their investments. So this is really a historic moment for carbon capture, and it's a historic moment in terms of establishing the financial architecture that makes carbon capture work. Okay. And we're, we hope that this is the first of many. Um, moving on to a different topic, uh, regulatory filings last week for the TMX pipeline showed it might be delayed for another two years. Um, I know you can't comment on the CER because they're independent, um, but what might a two-year delay mean for the federal government having to provide financial assistance to Trans Mountain, and uh, also how might it impact the timeline of the pipeline sale? Um, okay, well, thank you for the question. Um, and as you've said, um, you know, regulatory decisions are quite rightly independent. And uh, Don Farrell and the team at TMX have put forward their own application. Um, I'm not, you know, one thing I learned during the NAFTA negotiations is it's never a good idea to answer a hypothetical. Um, but let me say the team at TMX is doing an outstanding job getting the pipeline built. Um, and that pipeline has already improved the price that Western producer, the fact that the pipeline is nearly done has already lowered, uh, decreased the differential that we get, the price that we get for our Western fuel. Uh, and we're absolutely committed to getting this project done. Great, thank you. I also have a, um, a question for um, uh, Madam Deputy Prime Minister. You can call me Chris. Um, with regard to the, uh, the carbon the price that's, uh, that's been agreed to here, does this represent a, a floor or a ceiling for future projects? I think it's too early to say anything absolute about other projects. This is our first one, but it's as the first one, it's really, really important. And what it has shown is you can do a great CCUS project with a carbon, with a, effectively a contract for difference, a, a carbon offtake agreement at 8650. You know, we've just heard it from Mike, and I think he told us he can even do some projects cheaper than that. Um, so we're looking forward to hearing about that too. So I think this, it's a really important marker for sure. Okay, um, semi-related, uh, with regard to uh, Canada Innovation Corp. Mm -hmm. um, you said uh, that uh, ingenuity is really important when it comes to fixing Canada's productivity problem. Now that uh, initiative is uh, delayed. Um, what does that say to Canadians about uh, your government's ability to, uh, to, to fund innovation and, and, uh, and uh, build momentum? Um, what it says is we're committed to doing big things and we're committed to doing it a way that we get it right and we're able to execute. Uh, the Canada Growth Fund investment that I am here highlighting today is an example of our government being able to do something really hard and really complicated and I want to congratulate the amazing people here at Entropy and the really brilliant professional investors at PSP to whom we entrusted the 15 billion dollars of everybody's money um, and who we charged with making the investment decisions because they're professionals and we believe they could do it and they have shown that. 
we believe in the CIC. We believe that in Canada, we have to do even more to support productivity and innovation. You see the people here behind me and behind you are examples of Canadian entrepreneurship, Canadian innovation, and we think we need more of that. We want to be sure that we're getting it right, that we are building something which can deliver, and that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Sorry, Deputy <laughs> Prime Minister. You're getting your steps in. Uh, Aaron Collins with the CBC. I have a quick question for you, too. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the uh, digital services tax. And, sure. And uh, just curious, you've said in the past that uh, the plan was to implement that in the new year, and I'm just uh, hope, wondering if uh, that's still the case, if it's going to be implemented January 1st, and if not, why? Um, so you saw in our fall economic statement um, that we have moved ahead with our digital services tax. And our position on the DST is unchanged. Uh, so we continue to believe that the best outcome is a multilateral solution and is multilateral successful implementation of Pillar 1. And in fact, just yesterday morning, um, there was a virtual meeting of G7 finance ministers. And one of the things we talked about was a the need for us collectively to get behind Pillar 1 and to get it done and in place. That remains Canada's focus and our preferred solution. Second of all though, in this period while countries around the world are working towards Pillar 1, there are other countries that have a DST in place. Countries like the UK, countries like France. Canada paused our own implementation in order to be a good partner and work towards an international solution. But it's simply not fair to Canadians to pause forever. So that's why we have said we are going to move ahead. Um, and then the final thing that I will add is our preference very much would be that anything we do is done collaboratively with international partners, including with the U.S. And we are having very constructive conversations uh, with the U.S. Treasury. Uh, I think you kind of partially answered my follow-up there, but do you, do you still have confidence in those OECD negotiations and, and uh, do you think maybe the U.S. Is, is sort of holding things back a little bit? Or? You know, I was, as I said, at this virtual meeting of G7 finance ministers just yesterday morning. There was a very strong commitment from all ministers to move ahead towards a multilateral solution and we've had really tremendous progress. You know, we basically have an agreed text, um, but the next step is actually getting national implementation, and that is hard. But certainly what I heard yesterday was a very clear will to move ahead from all of our G7 partners. Thank you. All right, just one more for the Deputy Prime Minister as well. Um, on the, uh, the delay of the Canada Innovation uh, Corp, can you just give any details on why that delay occurred? Um, sure. Let me just start by saying we are absolutely committed to supporting growth in Canada, to supporting innovation, to supporting entrepreneurship. And, you know, our government believes, and I think this is a truth universally acknowledged in Canada, that we need more economic growth, we need more productivity. Frankly, we need more companies like Entropy. And that's why we're very, very glad to be supporting them. Um, we believe that when it's up and running, CIC will play an important and valuable role in that Canadian innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem. But we also really believe um, when you are building something new, which is what we're doing with CIC, you have to be sure you get it right and you have to be sure that all the pieces fit particularly given that CIC is building on some existing programs we have, like SHRED, like IRAP. So we have to be sure that all those pieces fit together, and we're committed to doing that. We're committed to doing it right. And, you know, I do want to say 
the Canada Growth Fund and the very swift rollout of an extremely complicated task. A contract for difference um, requires, you know, really sophisticated financial modeling and today's announcement shows that can be done. We were able to do that because of a structure that takes advantage of the professional investors already in place at PSP and I really want to thank them for that. When we're building an institution that I believe Canada really needs from scratch, we want to be sure we're doing it right and that we are effectively integrating the existing programs that we have. One question for Mike, maybe if I could. Um, I'm just kind of curious how you landed on the $86.54 per ton. Uh, I think a lot of companies were maybe asking for something a little higher than that. Like, what, what goes into that? How did you yeah, come yeah. To that? no. that's a great question. Um, okay, so Entropy's uh, fundamental approach has been to assemble the best technology in the world and, and to be on the uh, leading edge, uh, not bleeding edge, but leading edge. Uh, and to do that, we, we uh, acquired some state-of-the-art technology from U of R uh, about four years ago. So that helped us to get to a spot where our equipment is a little bit smaller and cheaper, our energy uh, uses are a little bit lower. But I think that there's probably a bigger um, sort of a macro influence around how we're able to deliver that on, on some projects, which is we don't actually chase decarbonizing of one particular facility. Entropy itself is entirely just interested in finding the lowest cost ton of carbon. So by going to a facility that's suitable for that, you start way ahead of the pack. Um, so in some cases, you might see um, projects that are in other industries, um, cement, uh, you know, coal, where the emissions themselves are dirtier and harder to deal with. And that, that increases your cost significantly, both on the capital up front and on the operating costs. So I wouldn't say that all of our projects will be all exactly the same cost, 8650. Uh, and what I would say is that the agreement for that level was essentially an agreement with us and CGF to allow CGF to buy the highest number of carbon credits at the lowest possible cost but at the same time allow us to achieve our minimum threshold returns. And, and so each project, every time we strike a new carbon uh, credit offtake agreement, each one will have a negotiation process to find the right balance between those two. Okay. Next question, question I just like to highlight one person who's here. Um, everyone who I've met at Entropy is a remarkable person. Um, and I think, you know, Canada and Alberta should be really proud to have a company like this here. Um, but when I walked into the meeting wearing my Ukrainian ribbon, um, one person uh, mentioned it, and it is a woman called Daria who's here. Um, she's a technical services analyst um, and she is a refugee from Kharkiv in Ukraine. Um, she's here with her child and I just am very grateful to her for the work that she's doing, contributing to our country. Um, and I'm really grateful to Entropy um, for supporting her. Thank you very much. We appreciate everyone attending today, and um, we look forward to uh, further follow-up in the future. Thank you very much. And thank you, uh, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland, for making the trip, and Minister uh, Schultz for being available on, uh, on short notice and for your kind words and, and collaboration together okay. on Let's carbon capture. Let's get together over the summer uh, outside Grand Prairie. Yeah. Thank you very much.